Bon après-midi, mesdames et messieurs. C'est un immense plaisir d'accueillir le président Obama au Canada. Nous sommes profondément honorés qu'il ait choisi le Canada pour sa première visite à l'étranger depuis son arrivée au pouvoir. Son élection à la présidence ouvre un nouveau chapitre de la riche histoire de la relation entre le Canada et les États-Unis. C'est une relation d'alliés, de partenaires, de voisins et d'amis très proches. Une relation fondée sur des valeurs communes, la liberté, la démocratie et l'égalité des chances, des valeurs personnifiées par le président lui-même. Nous discutons nos discussions aujourd'hui en porté sur trois priorités majeures. D'abord, le président Obama et moi-même reconnaissons que le Canada et les États-Unis doivent collaborer étroitement pour contrer la récession économique mondiale en prenant des mesures de relance mutuellement bénéfiques et en soutenant des, les efforts déployés pour renforcer le système financier international. Nous nous entendons sur la nécessité d'actions immédiates concertées pour rétablir la croissance économique et pour protéger les travailleurs et les familles les plus durement touchés par la récession en réduisant les, les impôts, en assurant l'accès au crédit et en faisant des dépenses qui soutiennent et stimulent l'activité économique. Deuxièmement, le président Obama et moi-même nous sommes entendus sur une nouvelle initiative qui va accroître notre coopération transfrontalière en matière de protection de l'environnement et de sécurité énergétique. Nous établissons un dialogue Canada-États-Unis sur l'énergie propre qui engage les hauts dirigeants des deux pays à collaborer pour développer une science et des technologies sur l'énergie propre qui réduiront les gaz à effet de serre et lutteront contre les changements climatiques. Troisièmement, le président et moi-même avons eu une discussion productive sur nos priorités communes, comme la paix et la sécurité internationale en particulier, sur notre engagement envers la stabilité et le progrès en Afghanistan. Cette visite a été très constructive. Elle a mis en lumière un solide consensus sur d'importantes questions bilatérales et internationales. Monsieur le Président, je suis dans l'impatience de travailler avec vous au cours des prochains mois, alors que nous progressons sur ces questions et tirons profit de la longue et profonde amitié entre nos deux pays et nos deux peuples. Well, it is a great pleasure to be here in, Iowa, uh, in Ottawa, and Prime Minister Harper and I just completed a productive and wide-ranging discussion on the many issues of common concern to the people of the United States and Canada. Uh, I came to Canada on my first trip as president to underscore the closeness and importance of the relationship between our two nations and to reaffirm the commitment of the United States to work with friends and partners to meet the common challenges of our time. As neighbors, we are so closely linked that uh, sometimes we may have a tendency to take our relationship for granted. But The very success of our friendship throughout history demands that we renew and deepen our cooperation here in the 21st century. We're joined together by the world's largest trading relationship and countless daily interactions that keep our borders open and secure. We share core democratic values and a commitment to work on behalf of peace, prosperity, and human rights around the world. But we also know that our economy and our security are being tested in new ways, and the Prime Minister and I focused on several of those challenges today. Uh, as he already mentioned, first we shared a commitment to economic recovery. Uh, the people of North America are hurting, and that is why our governments are acting. This week I signed the most sweeping economic recovery plan in our nation's history. Uh, today, the Prime Minister and I discussed our respective plans to create jobs and lay a foundation for growth, uh, the work that's being done by this government uh, to stimulate the economy on this side of the border is welcomed, uh, and we expect that we can take actions in concert to strengthen the auto industry as well. We know that the financial crisis is global, and so our response must be global. 
the United States uh, and Canada are working closely on a bilateral basis and within the G8 and G20 to restore confidence in our financial markets. I discussed this with Prime Minister Harper, and we look forward to carrying that collaboration to London this spring. Uh, second, we are launching, as was mentioned, a new initiative to make progress on one of the most pressing challenges of our time, the development and use of clean energy. How we produce and use energy is fundamental to our economic recovery, but also our security and our planet. And we know that we can't afford to tackle these issues in isolation. And that's why we're updating our collaboration on energy to meet the needs of the 21st century. Uh, the clean energy dialogue that we've established today will strengthen our joint research and development. It will advance carbon reduction technologies, and it will support the development of an electric grid that can help deliver the clean and renewable energy of the future to homes and businesses both in Canada and the United States. And through this example and through continued international negotiations, the United States and Canada are committed to confronting the threat posed by climate change. In addition to climate change, Prime Minister Harper and I discussed the need for strong bilateral cooperation on a range of global challenges, uh, one of the most pressing being Afghanistan. The people of Canada have an enormous burden there uh, that they have borne. Uh, as I mentioned in an interview uh, prior to this visit, uh, those of us in the United States are uh, extraordinarily grateful uh, for the sacrifices of the families uh, here in Canada, of troops uh, that have been deployed and have carried on uh, their missions with extraordinary valor. Uh, you've put at risk your most precious resource, uh, your brave men and women in uniform. And so we are very grateful for that. Uh, there is an enduring military mission against al-Qaeda and the Taliban in Afghanistan and along the border regions between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But we also have to enhance our diplomacy and our development efforts. And we discuss this in our private meetings. My administration is undertaking a review of our policy so that we forge a comprehensive strategy in pursuit of clear and achievable goals. And as we move forward, we intend to consult very closely uh, with uh, the government here in Canada to make certain that all our partners are working in the same direction. In April, we'll have a broader dialogue with our NATO allies on how to strengthen the alliance to meet the evolving security challenges around the world. And finally, we look forward to the Summit of the Americas. My administration is fully committed to active and sustained engagement to advance the common security and prosperity of our hemisphere. We will work closely with Canada in advancing these goals and look forward to a meaningful dialogue in Trinidad. As I've said, the United States is once again ready to lead, but strong leadership depends on strong alliances, and strong alliances depend on constant renewal. Even the closest of neighbors need to make that effort to listen to one another, to keep open the lines of communication, and to structure our cooperation at home and around the world. That's the work that we've begun here today. I'm extraordinarily grateful uh, to Prime Minister Harper for his hospitality, his graciousness, and his leadership. Uh, and I'm looking forward to this uh, being the start of uh, a continued extraordinary relationship between our two countries.